Welcome to Little Town of Bethlehem. This is um, all done with the help of stencils. The entire project was using our um, Bethlehem story stencils and there's a bunch of different kinds. You can make this as um, complex or as simple as you want to. You could do a small anyway tray and just do the main scene with just the words and maybe some angels. You could stretch it out on a longer thing. You could wrap it around a paper mache box and make it an ornament box. You could do a lot of things with this project. Okay, and this is painted on our anyway tray, which this is a tray that has awesome, it's an awesome size. You can flip it over, paint on the back. So now you get twice the painting for half the cost. Okay, and um, I think, I just think this was a blast to do. I used a lot of um, kind of more advanced um, stencil techniques, so I think that you'll really enjoy the lesson. The very first thing we'll do with our masonite surface is we'll seal both sides. We're going to use DuraClear matte varnish and a two inch foam roller with a little nose on the end. And the reason we like these instead of the ones that are flat on both ends is you don't get ridges as easily as you do with the ones that have flat on both. You're going to press it down, you're going to roll it, and then you're just going to roll it and spread it out thin. We just need enough to give it a coating. This is a really hard surface, so you don't have to worry about it absorbing into the surface as much as you need to just protect the surface from anything that can happen to it. You know what I'm saying? So we're just going to protect it. We'll allow it to dry. We'll flip it over and do the other side. Okay, so I've got some wax paper, just some sheets of wax paper, and I've got a couple stencils. We're going to use the um, Away in a Manger stencil, which has like your whole entire manger scene plus your background um, Bethlehem. I'm going to use some scrolls. That's the Capricious Scrolls. And this is the We Three Kings. Um, these would all be awesome used individually, but we're going to use them a little bit together and create a whole scene on our Anyway Tray insert. The first thing I want to do is I want to get them sticky on the back so I don't have any bleeding because I want to do a technique where you can shade and highlight all the way with one step. So we're going to use Tack It Over and Over, and we're going to use our um, roller. Okay, I'm going to put some tacket on my Gray Matters palette paper. I'm going to lay this out and I want it up, upside down from how I'm going to do it. And then I'll apply the tacket thinly to my roller. Really good idea is when you get a new stencil or you get a pile of new stencils, go ahead and just get them sticky because um, you really, I, I wouldn't use a stencil without it being sticky unless it was just a one time, ah, hello, roll away from yourself. There we go, to prevent that from happening. I'm going to be using a couple of these um, repeated and flipped over. In my case, I'm just going to grab two stencils so I have one going in each direction. If you don't want to do that and own two stencils, what you could do is you can just make it sticky on one side and after you get done painting, then go ahead and make it sticky on the other side and it'll be a little bit messier but you don't have you know twice the money laid out. Okay, and then um, the other thing that you could do is you could cut out, if you needed one piece, like say he was going to flip the other direction, you could cut this piece out of your stencil and make him sticky on the other side. I've certainly dissected stencils many times before. Okay, so then we allow this, we set it, we don't let it dry on the wax paper, we let it, um, we take it off and we let it sit someplace else that isn't going to be harmed. This stuff's super sticky when it's um, fresh, but then once it dries, it dries like a great big giant post-it note, and it's awesome stuff. And you can reposition it over and over and over again. So we'll just take that off. And a lot of times what I will do is I'll fold that over, and just kind of crumple it, and then I can lay that kind of down on top so it's not all touching, and I'll lay that someplace to dry. In this case, down there on my floor. I know I was thinking it, I wasn't sure if I said it, but a good thing to do when you get new stencils is to do this all at one time. That way you have one mess one time and you're not, you're not trying to do this. Every time you're getting ready to paint a project, um, you just make your stencil sticky and if you get one you really like, the Capricious stencil, the scroll stencil, is absolutely one. I would buy it in the big and the small and I would buy it in um, two sizes, two of them, to be able to flip them. I've used that on probably... 20 projects at least, and to have it pretty sticky the direction I want it is worth its weight in gold. Okay, we're going to want to take one coat of Ultra Blue Deep, 
and get this whole piece just base coated with it, that. Now what I want to do is I want to make room and I've got my non-stick black craft mat here. Okay, so I've got my mat here. I'm just going to make a big old mess all over the place. When I get done, I'll squirt it with water, clean it right off. I want to just go fast and get the, the thing done. We want one coat on here because if we, um, so let me show you. Okay, so notice how I have dark spots. We have to kill that background first. So we'll just kill it with the blue and then the next coat should do us okay. I might need to do one more base coat before I kill the entire brown color back there. Okay, but we got to get one thin coat on before we can do anything on top of it. All right, this is where we're going to get into some fast and furious um, rolling. I'm going to move my chair away. I'm going to stand up. I'm going to get a good angle going. I think I'm going to do it this way because I'll be loading. I will be able to move all my stuff out of the way. I got paints everywhere. So I'll be loading onto the toe of my brush, so I'm going to want to fade. Actually, that's not true. I'll be loading on the toe of my brush, so I'm going to want to fade this way. Is that a true statement? I have to load onto the toe of my brush. That is a fact. Now what's going to happen is we're going to bring, that's our dark sky right there, and then we're going to bring in, so I think I'm going to need it, so that's, I think that is a true statement. Let's just play, and if I have to rebase coat because I screw it up, then I screw it up. It's not a problem. So we're going to go ahead and roll the sky. I'm kind of feeling like I want this to be slightly darker up there at the top. I know it's going to dry darker, and this is a pretty dark color, but I think I'm going to get out um, Payne's Network Prussian Blue. I'll put that right there. I'll load on my toe. Okay, and now I'll come up here in my sky. And I'll just give myself that color up there. I don't want to go black because I think that'll be too too strong. I'll hang on to that. Okay. And so then I'll go down, and now I'm going to put a little bit of white in the toe of my brush. And I'm going to really blend that over here. And I need another paintbrush. Another paintbrush. My rollers are my paintbrush. I need this loaded in with my middle color. Heard the air conditioning just pop on, and I'm like, ah, it's going to blow it dry. So we're going to get this color kind of all over. Try not to touch what you've done and try to go in the same direction as you've been rolling, which I just totally didn't do. Okay, and now I need to fade this up. So I'm going to come from about here, and I've got it. So see how I don't have it evenly rolled? So I'm going to keep rolling it on here until I get what I like. ease off of it going up. I'm going to roll a little bit more. Put a little bit more in the brush and I actually have to flip it the other way. Getting it nice and faded. And then I'm tipping the back end of my brush or my roller up. I'll drop that brush off somewhere. And then I'll go in, check my, my other brush. I'm going to go into this one and I'm going to ease the transition between the two of these. Okay, and that should be a fairly nice even sky. Okay, now we'll let that dry. And actually, I could probably work on the bottom end of this, but you know what? I won't have a place to hang on to, so I'll put these both in plastic bags. 
and wait until my sky dries and then I'll work on the bottom end. All right, you're going to use your ghost rider and you're going to use your, we're going to put this, the stencil has a town. I'm going to put it about a third of the way up. So if we divide our project into thirds and we're going to have it start just however. But what I want is I want a T, I want a T square so I know that my line is level. I don't want a town, I don't want a little town of Bethlehem dripping off into the sunset there. And bring it up just a hair. So we'll get that against our edge. Make sure that's what we've got. And we'll just draw a little ceramic line. The ceramic line we'll remove with varnish and stuff so we don't need to worry about it. Okay, so I'll go there. And then I'm just going to go ahead and place this on my line. And then we're going to press it down. If you're worried about hitting some of these things, and what you can do is you can mask them with a little bit of tape. So if I didn't want you know, that to be there, I think if I didn't want that to be there, I could just tape that. And then it doesn't matter that I've got it there. And I don't have to worry about mussing up something. I'm going to mix some colors to do this. Let me get all set up here and we'll talk about it in a second. All right, what I'm going to do is the very the very first thing I'm going to do is use my um, my jumbo dauber. Let's get you in just a little bit. Okay, and I'm going to go in with Victorian blue. I'm going to pounce it on my palette really nice and pounced out. I don't want a bunch of seepage. And I'm going to go ahead and pounce all over this. I'm not going to worry too much about that line because I'm going to draw this down. This will meet this other one on the other side, so I can just move it over when I get done and repeat. Rinse and repeat. Okay, so straight up and down will get you the best results. I'll just leave it in place and get that all pounced. Now I've blow dried mine and I'm going to repeat with that color. Okay, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to blot on my paper towel a couple times, and I'm going to load into Calypso Blue on one side only. So in essence, I'm side loading and I'm blending. Okay, so here we are. Side loaded on one side. I'm going to keep straight what side that is, and then I'm blending that together. While this is wet, I'm going to work from the top of the stencil down, and then come back in and blend it. Okay, so we'll have a nice little pretty skyline. And blend it down across. Okay, and I'm going to go into a little bit of Whispering Turquoise. And I'm going to side load in the same position. And because I'm going dirty brush into dirty brush, or dirty sponge into dirty sponge, and I'm going wet into wet, it's going to blend to be a completely different color. Okay, now I'm wanting not to make that too light all the way across the top, just to hit the tips of those buildings. Definitely take some time with your blending because you don't want it to scream. Okay. And now let's see what we look like. Look for anything that's not blended. Oh, cool. Look at that. Isn't that neat? Okay. And then check and see if you've got anything bleeding under on this side of things. 
We are totally running out of room. Okay, and we'll wipe off anything on this side of our stencil, the sticky side, that might bleed onto our really pretty blended background. Take some care with this, because if you don't, and you mess up your pretty background, it's really hard to fix. It's not hard, it's not impossible, but you don't want to have to. Okay, so now what I'll do is I'll choose some of this stuff right here. Move me up. To go ahead and finish that launches right into that. Finish this side. Okay, and we will repeat with the same technique. Okay, so we're going to patch the colors where the bridging was, and that's what makes a really good stencil project. We'll go ahead and patch with a very dried brush with the um, Victorian Blue. Bring that down and just patch that. Okay, so we got one over here. And we'll wait until that dries, and then we'll go into the Calypso Blue, and we'll bring that down. And I think what I'd like to do is take a fingertip dauber into my Calypso Blue. I'm just going to patch that up, just to give it the same texture. And then we can even bring that fade down. Oops, except for that was way too far down. I'll blot that on the paper towel and go back into the Victorian Blue. And patch back up. Well, we've got all kinds of stuff going on in front of this, so it doesn't have to be perfect. Okay, but we've got a really pretty skyline now. Okay, and now what we have to do is we have to fade that color down. So what we'll do is we'll go into our dark brush as our dark blue paints, and we're going to go into um, the Victorian Blue. Put some more of that out. And we're going to roll that down. And I've already got some of my other blue, which is the color I really want this to lean to on there, and I'm not getting that to go all the way around, go around. Okay, so what we'll do, we'll turn sideways, and right down to where our banner is going to go across the bottom, go ahead and roll. to go into, and that was our Victorian Blue, I think we're going to need to go into our, our teal color, our Calypso Blue, and get the toe all nice and dirty, blend really well, and now we'll bring that down, we'll walk that up into things, be careful. Now we'll apply a little bit more pressure. Anything that we mess up, we can go back in with our brush and just kind of fix. Okay. And now what I want to do is I want to take our brush and go into the opposite side with our darker color, and I'm looking for it, the Prussian Blue, and bring this color up. So that's going to go right onto the brush, the tip that we were just painting with, with the um, Calypso. This is going to 
going to make our families be kind of a big old happy family. I'm going to flip this around. And we'll bring that up from the bottom here while it's still all wet. And bring that up and around. Every now and again, adjust where your roller is rolling so that you get a good blend. I'm just going back and forth up the piece and rolling it down. Okay, I think that is pretty good. I use my T-square again and I will apply my line. Oh, I'm on the wrong side. Hello. And then I will give myself a border. I think I don't want it to be too chintzy. Okay, and you have a couple of choices. You can either roll on your border or whatever. My tape, my paint isn't quite dry enough to um, my paint isn't quite dry enough to tape yet. So, and I want to just kind of move along because I just need these base coats on. So I'm going to go into Prussian Blue by itself, and I'll use my oval glaze. And I'll just give myself a base coat down there. And I'll go up to that second line, or the first line rather. Just go all the way up to it, and maybe even into it a little bit, so I don't end up with ridges. And then when I'm dry, I'll put that line back on. But now I'll have my base on. I'll know where my border is, and I'll be able just to put it back on. Just to have a little something going on down here, we're going to go ahead and base or stencil the scrolls with the um, this thing, Capricious. And I think we'll go ahead and use the Prussian Blue straight up and down. Watch your edge there. That's a sharp little pointy, awesome, nasty edge. So what do we do then? We get out our tape. It's too close to the edge, so we'll extend the stencil. Whoops. And now I don't have to worry about it. As long as you're not pressing that tape down, you should be fine as far as it peeling up paint or anything like that. Now what I do want to do is peek and see if this is actually going to show. I might have to do a different, a second coat. Oh no, I think that's awesome. Okay, so I'll peel that up. And then I'll just move this down. I'll have to dry this first. Okay, we're going to use our T-square again. Our tray is 18 inches wide, and we're going to go at exactly the nine right here and milk ish. And then we can double check this way to make sure that's fairly straight. Yeah, that's pretty straight. T-squares come in handy for all kinds of stuff. All right, then what we'll do is we'll find our star. Let's go ahead and put our star up there first. The star is going to be coming right directly down from the edge. And I want to make sure that I'm square. I don't want my star being cockeyed. Okay, I'm not quite square, so we'll pop that down just a little bit and slide it over. And that's better. Oops. And push that up. Okay. That gives me what I want. And I think we'll go into just a fingertip dauber. And I think we're going to go into white. I'm pretty certain I want this to be white. And we'll definitely tap off the excess. I'm putting this in so I know exactly where to put my um, my manger. And I can certainly lay this right back down over the top and do it again. Okay, so I'll peel that up. I'll let that dry. 
going through quite a few um, jumbo daubers, um, ink sweepers, and things like that today. Okay, we're going to go ahead and do the manger first. Okay, I'm going to use my um, fingertip dauber. And I'll just go ahead and base everything with that color. I think I'm going to have to actually float my highlights. I don't think I'm going to be able to do all of the details on the stencil this way. But that's okay. So we'll just get this done. And we're going to do all of the people and all of the details the same way. So you're just going to lay them out like you see them on your pattern or on your picture and just do them all after one by one. Get your layers in. All right, in the case of baby Jesus, we've got him very, very much all this little tiny fine detail cutouts. I'm going to switch to a crescent brush for stenciling him because the crescent brush will get into all those little details. You definitely want this to be a nice detailed nativity. Get that all based. Let's see what we're able to do as far as getting some of that highlighting done at the same time. Okay, so he's definitely got some white going on. I'm going to go into side load into my white, which is going to make it into a kind of a blue color because I'm dirty brush. I'll blot once on my paper towel. And then I'm going to go in an arch across the top and just complete my arch and blend it. Okay, and we'll have a little bit down here. I'm turning my brush and we'll have a little bit down on the sides of his legs. A little bit here. Okay, and let's take a look. That looks pretty good, huh? I have decided that I want to go ahead and put my highlights on all of these as I do it. The highlights are going to be more towards the, the star, so we want to highlight on the upper um, end of things. You need to do it while it's wet, like I showed you with the baby Jesus. So to get this done, I'm going to go back over it and wet it again. <clears throat> and I'll have to work in sections. Okay, so I'm going to side load with my Whispering Turquoise. If, that, if I go through this whole thing, it'll all be dry by the end. You definitely want to keep it not all over the place. So. And if you get little circles, just go back through and blend them. Soften your pressure when you're blending. Okay, now I'll just blot on my paper towel, re-neutralize with the um, with the whatever color that was, um, Payne's Gray. And then we'll just do all of these little bits. I totally had the wrong color, so it's Prussian blue and not um, Payne's Gray for the, the initial base there. Okay, notice that I've used my T-square and my Ghost Rider to give myself a series of straight lines. The stencil, because things have to fit, is not necessarily laid out in a straight, so I want to make sure that when I put my guy down here, he's not leaning or being all kind of strange. So I will use the straight lines. Okay, next we're going to um, go ahead and base coat the letters. I'm going to use white to base coat. I'm thinning my paint with a little bit of water so it flows. You're going to have to do a couple coats on some of the stuff. And I want to use a brand new or a very cleaned um, round brush that is in good, good condition. Okay, so I'm going to load it, <clears throat> keep my brush under control and straight upright. And I'm going to start with easy flat things. I'm going to start my corner, draw it down. I'm just going to do a little outlining action. Confident, breathe out as you stroke, and then turn your board as you need to. Focus your eyes, like I find my eyes kind of wobbling in and out. And then just give them a good old fashioned base coat. 
Okay, the way I've done the lettering is I've done all of the stuff that's like a base coat moment, and all the rest of this is pretty much lines. I'm going to take my Raphael because I need super duper control. This is going to give me awesome lettering. I'm going to soak it in water, just rest it over there for about three or four minutes, and then I'll just do my line work so that it's just nice and crisp. All right, I'm getting into a position where I'm going to start running through things that are wet. So I'm going to get on my bridge and adjust my depth of my brush now we'll move into our angels down here we're going to use Victorian blue and hope like heck it's not too too bright for the area they may need just two coats here so I'm gonna go ahead and leave that stencil on and give them a second coat and I'll get back to you when it's dry. All right, I've given that a second coat, and now I'm going to side load into um, Prussian blue, and I'm going to darken the back side, starting from the bottom, walk my way up, and then I'm going to walk back down. I just want a kind of a bleed color, and then I'll side load the other side with my Indian turquoise. Nope, it's not Indian, it's whispering. I think Indian's a throwback from a while ago. And we'll highlight the front end. And let's sneak a little peek. Yeah, I think that'll do it. We're going to take an ink sweeper. I've got double sided masking tape and we're going to use our Victorian blue and make our line straight across. Allow it to dry, give it a second coat. All right, I'm going to get ready for a lot of little floating, little tchotchke floating. So, what we want to do is we want to create, um, we want to put some squirts of water. Okay, let me get you on camera first. I'm going to put some squirts of water on our palette. And notice the little bubbles just going to stay there. And then what I'll do is I'll soak up the little bubbles. I'm just using a little mist it. Um, I'll soak up the little bubbles to do my floating. That way my float's not dry. I can just keep on floating. We're going to, I'm going to get some white paint out. And I'm going to use my curved flat because it's going to allow me to do chisels and all kinds of things that I need to do for this um, project. And I'm not going to use a lot of paint or a lot of water. Okay, so we'll come over here and use my the guide here. Okay, so we're going to come up. We're just going to float the shapes. You've got to kind of keep, and then remember he's got like a nose. And he's got like a little bit of a beard. And then just blot as you need to. Okay, the most important thing is not to get too crazy with the detail. The eye will fill in most of the work. Okay, and we're going to just come on down. And we're going to end in both C strokes so that we don't have to, um, don't have to worry. Now he's praying, so we'll give him a kind of a strong moment here on his hands. Okay, and then we'll give him his robe. Okay, that's what we can do because we know that um, he does have a robe. He has hands sticking out of his robe, so we can give him the stuff that he does have, um, rather than just allowing the stencil to do whatever. We can also give him his trim on his hat. That'll start giving it depth, so it's not just stenciled looking. Okay, give him his knees here, and then his robe is just puddling there. Okay, and that's what we're going to do for everything, is we're just going to go ahead and highlight it, use your picture, um, and then, let's see, so if we're baby Jesus, when my um, brush starts getting a little bit too dry, I'll go ahead and rinse it back out. So baby Jesus is going to have a few other things going on here. He's got this straw, 
so I want to end that. But so what I can do, rather than just highlight where the stencil is, okay, so we'll go here and we'll give him the straw. It starts flipping out. Okay, so now what I can do is I can bring some straw in front of And give him kind of a line. And that's going to frame him just a little bit more. You got to do it shape following. So he's got this line, whoops, and it's got to kind of flow. So now he's nice and framed. There's a whole baby moment going on there. And then we'll just anchor everything else. Okay, we're going to marry just a little bit of a kerchief here. Look at her face. I'm going to have to do it upside down. Keep her real delicate. Round it out. Got our little foot sticking out back there. Okay, so you can take a little bit of liberty as far as what you want to expose. I think this is her other hand up here. In her case, she's got a little bit of a robe thing going on. Okay, and that gives her just nice details. And finish Joseph, pick up a few water drops. So he's also got his robe. Maybe we'll let him have that moment. I think this is his kerchief back here where his um, his head thing is coming out of. Give that just a little bit of a moment. If you're unsure, leave it alone. I think I am unsure. Not sure exactly how that would fall, so we'll leave it. And we'll move on over to our wise guys. I guess these are our shepherds, not our wise guys. They're not really wise guys. Okay, we'll get that nice and bright in there. his beard up his face just a little bit. And then of course he's got light shining on him. up water. If your brush starts becoming too too loaded, then just um, rinse. Just float straight down that. I'll get the other crook while I'm at it. Just connect any lines right in front of that little sheet. It just starts becoming deeper, doesn't it? Alright, so now I'm on the building. 
So what I'll do is I'm going to tie the building in together. So I'll bring the supports down to each other. And maybe we'll even add some kind of extra something or another going on right there. You can make it a little rougher by wiggling. And it doesn't have to be perfect. Let's go out. And then we'll float up on the inside as well. Uh, get that, that little bit of something going on. We can even give this just a little bit of detail if we want to. A little bit of wood grain. Give it some age. We could do the same here on the baby's bed. Okay. And make sure you close up the stats. And I think that looks pretty good. I'm going to erase my lines. Um, oh, we're going to get the angel's wings. So I'm going to go into the whispering turquoise for the angel's um, initial details. And it's got a little bit of white in my brush still. I can like that that's separated. Skim a little bit over the far wing. Mm, I really don't like what it did there. Spit and erase. Okay, so we'll do the same on the other side. Pick up a little more color. hands ought to be highlighted. Okay, now we're going to dry rub with Whispering Turquoise. Dry off your dome brush. And we're going to come out of the star. And we're going to come down to baby Jesus and fan it out. Okay, so we're going to start getting that kind of glow coming down. And I think we've got to bring that out bigger so that you start where the paint is going to be the strongest, which is in the middle. And then you fade it out after you get rid of some of the paint. It's kind of going to fall down at different angles. Coming. You get lots of dust doing this, so don't worry about that. More whispering turquoise. Really dry it off on your paper towel. Okay, and
without making it be too circular. Right back up to the source of the light. Okay, I'm getting some good movement. That's awesome. And if I need to, I can go back in and float um, the details on, like baby Jesus and stuff. I can make them be um, a little bit darker in areas that I got too light. We could re-stencil and go right back over the whole thing. So, like, you've got lots of options. Really dry it off. Excuse me. And what was that? Lost a hair. Whoops. Lost a paper towel. I'm losing it. not okay to just have this be an empty area. This needs to be a kind of a landing zone of light and interest. Okay, so that's going to give us just a little bit more of a enter into what's going on. Okay. So now Give it that streaky star going in all directions kind of moment. Okay, and I think it might be time to switch to the white dirty brush. Starlight. Now let's go, and I've got this not so dried off. Okay, now it's like raining light onto them. And I think this one I'm going to not dry off hardly at all, and I'm going to hold my breath because this is the one. Okay, and I think I'll do one more time. Gives that star burst kind of moment. And we'll 
go into white again. Okay, and now these guys look a little bit lonely out here, so I think we need to hit them with a little bit of stuff. Just smear just a little bit. Have it end with their highlights, kind of. And maybe we'll get this down here to these angels. sure okay, that kind of crosses that bridge right there not liking how white this is so I've got to figure out how to bring this whole thing together all right so I'm going to go ahead and float white again on the things that I've covered up with all this stuff Being careful not to let things take over. Just the important stuff, like, you know, the baby. Crying hands. Just the stuff that's in front. Let some of this stuff over here come forward. Like it's being lit up. Same thing over here. The drum is important. It's our little drummer boy. We give the angel's wings a little bit of shine and shimmer. Some white. There are halos. Faces. Hands presenting. Okay, we're going to sneak a little bit of desert turquoise into the spaces behind our city. Okay, so what that's going to be is in the deepest areas. And I'm just going to blot or mop with my fingers or with whatever I decide I want to mop or whatever with. A mop is fine. Just gonna add some. I think I will grab them off. My fingers are getting kind of blue and dirty. I just want to highlight the horizon line. Okay, just give it a little bit more depth. 
Okay, now I'm going to bring some desert turquoise, kind of dry brushed, loaded in my brush. And I'm going to bring like a cross hatching across my band. It's going to kind of fade. I got to keep my direction the same. I feel like I will turn it upside down so I can pull it in a natural angle. So what we're doing is bringing the colors together. And now we'll go into white as well. And we'll start in the middle and let that fade into that big. Okay, that brings my lights down and I think I'm going to have to go into my desert turquoise and I think I'm going to have to bring my letters up. So what that means is I'm going to make them be bluer on the bottom and white on the top. And they'll be fading letters. And we may have to go even one step further into the um, Victorian blue. Let's try that. Dirty brush. looks like. Yeah, I think that might be better. And that brings the blue up just like on the angel's wings. Okay, I'm going to take some drying time extender and I'm going to put my sky behind drying time extender. Rub it all one way and then rub it all another way. You can go into your scene, that's fine, as long as everything's dry. Make sure you're dry. Don't make it too wet, but do make sure you're coated and then you can kind of blot with a paper towel that's clean to make sure you're not soupy. We don't want it to be soupy. Some people use their hands, I don't like stuff on my hands besides blending paint. Okay, so get that all blended in there. And in this case, I might want it just a little soupy. I'm going to do a little test. Got my Raphael brush. Had that blurb right there. What I'm wondering is if I leave it a little bit soupy, if I'll get some spreading stars. Okay, so when I have various stars, Some are going to be big and some are not going to be big. Start just kind of going random. Oops, you don't want to smear them though, that's a comment. If I get a little bit of water in my brush, I might get more spreading because Retarder doesn't like water go here and the same thing yeah that's going to be some nice spread and give it some time to dry and you might want to blow dry it okay when you think you have enough of the big guys then start giving yourself some little points here and there So 
methodical. Be careful not to make dice. Okay, now we're going to bring stardust outside of our star here. And so we're just going to shoot short ones on the short arms. Now I'm running out of my extender down here, so let's go ahead and stop and give that a coat as well because I think I do want to do some dancing around on the bottom with some star. Okay, so now we're going to do our... our bleh, keep your arm out of that, and where is my bridge? Okay, try that again. So we're going to do our star dust, shining down here. Okay, and then I want to bring... Stardust coming down. Let's give him a little baby halo moment. Okay, and I think we need a little bit of zooming into We're getting a little carried away here. I think these guys look like they're being hailed on, so let's let them be basking instead of being hailed. Okay, I like it. And somehow, we need to get this guy to glow up or do something. So, let's try just a little bit of blue, of the Whispering Blue. And just try scumbling it through the top of his words. And we'll go into this and we'll just get that just a nice chunky kind of topping highlight and just a little bit of white oh, that'd be not too much now well, maybe that's what we could do is we could have a little bit of magic dust kind of coming Maybe that's a good idea. Okay, we'll go into Desert Turquoise. And maybe we'll go... Nope, don't like that at all. Maybe we'll just smear that guy. Yeah, I don't think that much attention is good down there. Okay, while we have um, our retarder on there, I'm going to spatter with some pretty heavy, meaning I didn't thin it too much. Um, 
This one is the dark, the Payne's Gray. Just gonna spatter around. Give myself a little bit of framing. ourselves a few extra little stars. So do that real dry because otherwise we'll end up with whole galaxies. <clears throat> there we go. I think we have a starry, starry sky. Okay, I forgot to anchor down my people. So I'm going to use the dark blue and give everybody just a little streak of shading to anchor them. And that's the Payne's Gray. That just gives them just a little bit more, hey, yeah, I'm on the ground kind of thing. Okay, and I think we are about there. I'm a little bit concerned that I have isolation with my blue up here, and I think I may need to bring some of that down here. So let's get into our blue, and let's bring maybe our Gloria Word up with some blue of the bright blue, and maybe we'll add some into our angels. Let's bring just a little bit. Yeah. Do I like that down there? I don't know. Maybe I do. It's going to be a lot less than the other colors you've got going on. Okay, so I like that that's bringing in the sky color. Side right. Okay. And I think our angels need to have just a little kiss of something like a glaze. Let's try glazing them. Let's go into that blue. I can find a spot on my palette. And still a little bit damp with my. Um, Retarder. Retarder takes quite a bit of time to dry. I was blow drying it, but I get very impatient. Okay, so now they have just a little bit of blue down. On them. Let's also glaze our corners over here. Okay, I don't know if we'll be able to see that very much or not. I'm going to repeat on the other side. So much easier than trying to line all those letters. I'm just going to glaze this bottom corner completely and let the letters glaze themselves. Okay, and I think that kind of brings us through our little angel a little bit more. like it. Okay, in a moment of daring, I've decided to break out some yellow to give it some warmth. We're going to use, we are using mustard seed because it's very transparent. I'm going to just use it where it should be used, if you know what I'm saying here. Like this is going to bring our eye right there. Let's go ahead and bring 
Oh, that's stardust. top of the manger and some down on top of the angels and these letters down here okay so that's going to be a moment so give the angels just a little bit of gold just a little bit. It wants to wash in the ground. And our lettering. Just ever so slight a glimmer. Not everywhere. Tops. Okay. Okay, we're going to shade around the perimeter with Payne's Gray just to sink our edges into each other. I don't want it too wet. It's going to just be like a glaze. That should make everybody kind of belong to each other then. Close the sky in so that you're not falling off the edge of the world. Okay, I'll let that dry. 